Hello everybody, this is General Snivy, and welcome back to more of the Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix playthrough. Last time we got quite a bit done, explored a few new worlds, and also had a deal with copyright yet again in the world of the Pirates of the Caribbean, because... Because copyright is my best friend. <laughs> uh, anyway... Not only that, but we also reunited with Aladdin and Abu, and it seems like Iago turned over a new leaf as well. And we also found out that uh, Jafar's lamp was around, so we kind of had to seal that away. <laughs> Let's see how long that'll last. Anyway, in today's session, we're going to be exploring a familiar world as well as one brand new world as far as I can tell. <laughs> We may be able to do more today, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. Anyway, before we get started, let's open up Sunlight Storm. Why? Well, it's quite simple. It is a new world that is kind of uh, blocked right now. It's kind of closed. So we have no choice but to open it up. So let's use the High Wind Level 7. Because why not, right? Let's go. Anyway, I believe this is uh, explaining the special orbs and how they work. Defeat rare yellow and red en enemies to pick up special orbs containing gummy, gummy blocks. Sweet. Anyway, as I mentioned before in the last session, this whole uh, area right here, this is entirely optional. But I am showing it off because, well, it is part of the game. And it is part of the completionist criteria, if you know what I mean. So anyway, uh, one thing I'm going to go ahead and explain right now is that over the past week, it's been incredibly busy for me. How exactly? Well, I can't really get into the specifics because, for one, I can't quite remember. And two, it was just a lot. It was just a lot of stuff came up over the past week alone. Not only this, but uh, I know Friday and uh, yesterday I said I was going to stream, but that kind of fell through due to one particular reason. That is due to the gosh diddly dang heat. I mean, when it comes to me and streaming, I already sweat enough as is with just my lights alone shining on me. Combining the heat and putting that into the equation? Good lord above, that is something else entirely. <laughs> Let me tell you, that's not fun to deal with. Trust me. <laughs> so... On Friday, I had to deal with the heat. It was really damn hot and absolutely miserable beyond comprehension. So, there was that. Plus, yesterday, I also had to deal with the heat again. Once again, not fun. Not only this, but I also had to bring up my portable air conditioner, so that way I can deal with the heat that much more smoothly. And let me tell you, getting that thing set up once again was an absolute pain in the ass. It honestly was. One of the biggest pains I've ever had to deal with. Thankfully, disassembling it is not really too difficult. And when I say disassemble, I obviously mean, you know, removing it from the window and just taking it back to the basement where I store it. But bringing it back upstairs? Good God, that was really something else. So, after we got the air conditioner set up, uh, my mother came up with a brilliant idea of a problem I've been experiencing for like the past year. And that is the top of my window. Oh dear, I'm about dead. I'm going to die, aren't I? Yes, I'm dead. Or not. Whew, that was close. Uh, is my stream lagging? 
Or was that just the dashboard screwing up again? Honestly, I'm not too sure. I haven't paid attention to the dashboard all that much. But again, it's kind of weird. I don't think that lag will show up in the recording at all. If it does, I'm going to be pissed. Alright. Well, anyway, upon completing that particular path and opening it up, missions level 1 and 2 are open. Not only this, but we also got High Wind level 8 and Falcon level 8. Pretty nice. And we got an Ultima G2. Sweet. Again, definitely worth opening up these paths as soon as you come across them. That way, you don't have to worry about dealing with them ever again. Unless you're going for full completion, in which case, good luck. <laughs> so, anyway, as I was saying before, my mother came up with a brilliant idea of dealing with a problem I've been experiencing as of, like, the past year. Anyway, uh, she decided to get some double-sided tape. And first time it didn't work because the window wasn't really all that clean. So we cleaned it up really, really good. And then stuck some more uh, double-sided tape on and bada bing, bada boom. Now it's holding it in place, which is awesome. Anyway, our first stop of the day is going to be Halloween Town. It looks quite different from uh, our last few experiences with the place. And also, another thing we're pointing out too, do not be surprised if I have to end up muting the YouTube version of this later. <laughs> uh, who knows? I mean, the last few experiences have been okay, and I haven't had too many problems when it comes to muting uh, the particular song, but you never goddamn know. Anyway, let's head into Halloween Town. Looks like this iteration is more or less following the movie. A little bit. And by that I mean like very, very loosely. Whoa. <laughs> I seriously wonder how I got sucked in after that. That's kind of weird. Halloween Town, right? Well, it sure does look like Halloween. What the heck? Hmm. Halloween Town's looking a little more festive than usual. Hey, it's Zero. How have you been, boy? Hmm. Seems like Zero has something to show us. <laughs> Other than the suspicion of those lights there, this is Halloween Town, folks. Welcome back to Halloween Town, aka the song that plays This Is Halloween. Granted, it's an instrumental version of This Is Halloween, but even so, I'm just saying, it's quite a treat to hear this song once again. Also, I was just, uh, Seeing if I got any new Keyblades from the last session, which, uh, let me tell you, it has not been, a. Uh, it's been quite a while since I've last played this game. So, it really has been quite a while. So don't be surprised if I end up screwing things up majorly. Also in the last session, like at the very end of the last session, we got our hands on new summon, Genie. Anyway, let's go meet with Zero. What's that for? Are those skeleton reindeer? It appears that they are. Sora, Donald, 
and Goofy, welcome back, and Merry Christmas! It's June. Merry Christmas? Don't you mean Happy Halloween? Of course, Halloween greetings from Jack Skellington, the Pumpkin King! Forgive me, I'm in a Christmas mood. You see, I'm running the show again this year, but I need Sandy Claus blessings, so I'm off to Christmas Town. Sandy Claus? I think he means Santa Claus. Aren't these decorations wonderful? This year, Halloween Town's going to handle Christmas, too. But first, we have to visit Sally. She's working on something no self-respecting Santa Claus can do without. Come along, I'll show you. A Halloween Town Christmas. Sounds like a nightmare before Christmas. That was just perfect timing, I swear to God. Want to go check it out? Come on, hurry! Whew. Well, that was quite an introduction. Anyway, folks, welcome to Halloween Town proper. And as you can see, this place got quite an overhaul. For one, it's a lot smaller compared to the last few iterations of this place. But it will be made up for at a later point in time, and you'll soon see why. Hmm. I wonder what's going on here at the lab. Isn't Sally supposed to be here? Hello, doctor, where's Sally? Can you see that I'm in the middle of an experiment? Um, you look like you were reading a book to me, dude. Ooh, what the heck is this contraption supposed to be? Also, hi, Sally. Good of you to show up. Hey, this is way too heavy. Let's toss it. You do, and you'll be sorry. Now bring it over here. He <laughs> <laughs> Funny, as I had to do that with uh, my old gaming chair, throwing that into the dumpster. In fact, I had to oh. yeet it. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, screw you, lock, shock, and barrel. Now my experiment is ruined. <laughs> Jerks. Sally, did you finish it? I want to show my good friends. I'm sorry, Jack. I I need a little bit more time. Oh. Well, that's all right. Just as long as it's ready for Christmas. But, Jack... Hmm... I'd best be off. I've got to go get Sandy Claus right away. Wonderful to see you again. Goodbye for now. <laughs> if you say so. Go get Santa Claus. Please, Thora. I'm afraid something terrible will happen if Jack goes through with this. You can try that again. Mm-hmm. If anyone's... If anyone's seen the movie, you know what she's talking about. Are those strange looking fellows in the town square with you? Huh? What fellows? You know, the ones who wanted to spoil Halloween and Christmas? What are they called again? Heartless? They're definitely not with us. Oh dear. But Donald, Goofy, and I can get rid of them for you. And then we can go see Santa. <laughs> Ooh. Just see Sora's eyes light up. First, the Heartless. What can I say? Even though Sora is technically older in this game, he is still kind of a kid. He's still a young man, if you know what I mean. Anyway, Jack Skellington is here, and he has his own fair share of abilities to share. So, anyway, his abilities are Blazing Fury, Icy Terror, Bolt, uh, Bolts of Sorrow, Applause, Applause, Lucky Lucky, Fire Boost, Blizzard Boost, Thunder Boost, MP Hastera, Auto limit and auto healing. And again, not really that helpful when it comes to abilities. I'll definitely put on auto limit so that way I can uh, show off Jack's limit. Which I will tell you folks, it's pretty flashy. Kind of like Aladdin's limit back in Agrabah. 
But really, it's uh, nothing really to worry about here. Okay, I don't even know what, I, what it is I'm saying here. Regardless, though. No, I don't want that. There we go. Take off all those items so that way Jack doesn't throw them all away like a freaking idiot. And besides, like I always say, best to steal the items from the guests of the world. Okay. Now then, let's examine Town Square Fountain. Hit it to activate. Interesting. Also, don't forget to hit this on your way out. It's the Halloween Town map. Believe it or not, that's the... That's not the only map we'll be getting in this world, despite it being so damn small. Hmm. Okay. A security system. I wonder what that's all about. <laughs> if that sounds familiar to anyone, it kind of sounds like the Hollow Bastion security system that's in place. Anyway, let's head into Halloween Town Square and deal with these riffraff. Hey. Now hear this, you, you fiends! Leave Halloween Town at once, by order of the mayor! Jack, where are you? I'm only an elected official. I can't handle this by myself! Jack! We're on it. Time to take care of business, as per usual. Say hello to some brand new heartless folks. And say hello to Jack's Limit. I gotta say, it really is a fun limit. Don't get me wrong. What a show, am I right? Of course, that unfortunately does mean that you're draining all your MP to execute it, but still, it's pretty damn cool. Don't get me wrong. Also, one more thing worth noting as well is that you can actually use the fountain to, uh... Right, what I was trying to say was you can also use the fountain to damage the Heartless, albeit you can't really do very much with it. Also, level up. The level up we received increased not only our defenses, but also... It managed... It also gave us a brand new ability, which is Reaction Boost. And... I'm pretty sure I've shown that off before, but regardless, Reaction Boost, what that will do is that it will boost the damage dealt for Reaction Commands. So, that's pretty cool. All done! How is Sandy Claus supposed to relax with all this going on? That's it, fellows. Sandy Claus needs bodyguards. Are you up to the task? Us? Yeah. <laughs> I like how Dolan's like, really, dude? Really? Why'd you have to say yes? I guess that just goes to show how excited Sora is to meet Santa Claus. What should we bring along next time? A bucket full of caterpillars! Or something even worse! Bodyguards, Christmas Town is this way. The doorway is in the woods just past the graveyard. Okay, sounds good to me. Anyway, before we head out, let's pick up a couple of treasures that are hanging around here. Also, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I can't get that uh, sticker yet, unfortunately. Gonna have to wait until I basically max out all of my movement abilities before I can do something about it. Also, that gate is a trick gate. It can hit you, and thankfully it doesn't deal any damage whatsoever. Even though it seems like it does, it actually doesn't. So, that's pretty nice. Okay, I think after this fight, I am going to go ahead and turn off Auto Limit. 
because I've already shown off Jack's limit. Definitely one of my more favorite limits to show off in the entire game, that's for sure. But, hey, just saying. And boom. Before we head off to the graveyard, there's definitely some exploring I would like to do, if I possibly can. And sadly, I can't go in here. The gate is chained shut. <laughs> but trust me, we will be able to go in there soon enough. At some point in time, but not right now, obviously. Also, be careful when exploring around the graveyard, because some of these uh, tombstones, they'll actually fall on you. And yes, they'll... I'm pretty sure they can deal damage. I mean, it doesn't seem like it, as far as I can tell, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I feel as though that they don't deal damage. They're much like the gate in uh, the main Halloween Town Plaza. But, you never know. It's better to be safe than sorry. It may not necessarily damage you, but it will send you flying backwards and throwing you off balance. And that can open you up to enemy attacks. So be careful when exploring the graveyard and dealing with trick obstacles of that nature. Just saying. Now then, what's really funny about the whole uh, holiday doors is that all the different doors lead to different holidays. We have... Um, I know this one's Valentine's Day, this one's St. Patrick's Day, this one's Easter, this one's Thanksgiving, and I'm not too sure about that one. I think that's maybe Hanukkah? Or some other holiday that I'm completely unaware of? What's really funny is that in the movie, all the holiday doors were perfectly circular, like, all around. And the Christmas Town door, which is right here, it was proudly uh, displayed front and center. Again, it's kind of weird how they singled out this particular door amongst the rest of the holiday trees, and it's not a part of the background, if you know what I mean. All right, let's open her up. The door to Christmas Town. The spooks of Halloween can get so tiresome year after year. I wanted something new, and I found this. Interesting. Beyond this door is a world filled with wonders, the likes of which you've never seen. At first, I couldn't believe my eyes. Everything was so fresh and exciting. Come on, just open it. <laughs> uh, gotta love Sora's uh, childish antics. In we go. Just jump in. Double oof. Cool. Wow. Ain't that a beauty? In his workshop. Shall we? Ooh. Here's a little uh, interesting bit of trivia. In the original Vanilla Kingdom Hearts 2, the theme for uh, Halloween Town, This is Halloween, also plays here for whatever reason, and Sora is still in his Halloween outfit. However, with Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, I believe, on the original PlayStation 2, they decided to change things up a bit. As you can tell, Sora, Donald, and Goofy have a brand new holiday-themed outfit for Christmas. Plus, there's a whole new song for this place as well, which is even more awesome to see. So, again, I really like the nice touch that they added for uh, ho th this part of Halloween Town. A completely different tune. One that's exclusive for this part of Halloween Town, which is pretty damn sweet. Anyway, looks like we can make some things. So we have a 
can make a Thundergut Trinket, Power Band, Garnet Ring, and a Mithril Ring. Hmm, sounds fun. Um, let's see, let's go with this first, and we'll make, we'll use one of these, uh, Bright Shards, because we got a whole bunch of these things anyway. Greatly, or no, it increases Thunder Resistance and greatly increases Defense. Pretty nice. Now for the Power Band. It looks like for this one, we're going to need uh, a different variant of the stones that we've uh, used to increase the Moogle experience and other things of that nature. And that is the Bright Stone and Energy Stone. Let's go ahead and use this. Bada bing, bada boom. Extremely increases defense. Pretty nice. Now for the Garnet Ring. Uh, Bright Shard, Synthesize, bada bing, bada boom. Increases strength and extremely increases maximum AP. And Moogle level up to level 4. Moogle leveled up. Can now use two extra materials. That's awesome. And of course, we can always remake some of these trinkets if we uh, so desire. So again, awesome. Let's see, new items. We have the... Tactician's Ring, Aquamarine Ring, and Platinum Ring. Honestly, I think I may save my money for now, because I did make some pretty neato new items, and I'm definitely going to be equipping some of them. Uh, let's see. Uh, maybe not this for Sora. This? Maybe. Let's see here. Again... Gotta love having that extra defense, but still, not exactly something I really need, per se. I think I'll keep uh, Sora's current equipment equipment the way it is as of right now. Uh, let's see, Donald. I think I'll uh, switch out one of these things here. Um, not so much going to give him the power band, because that's not necessary. He's already frail enough as is. And even with it, it's not really going to help him all that much. So I think I'll give him the Thundaga Trinket. And as for Goofy, I'm going to give him the Power Band. And let's see. And I think that'll do it. Yep, that sounds about right to me. Cool. Might as well use the AP boost that I have here. Am I right? Also, I can't really say for sure if this song also is going to trigger some sort of content ID thing. No, on my luck, yeah, it will. But thankfully, this will probably be one that I can fight no problem. Most claims that I do get for the Kingdom Hearts playthroughs that I've been doing as of late, they're mostly BS. However, the claims that come from the Walt Disney Music Publishing Company as one of the claimants... Yeah, those are legitimate, and those are songs I do have to mute, because trust me, I've tried to fight them, didn't work out. Whoa, wow. Hello! Here too? Are you kidding me? Vanguard! <laughs> oh dear. Ain't this a hoot. <laughs> Kind of uh, interesting to see how uh, we have ha uh, Heartless here within freaking Christmas Town of all places. Why do they have to be here exactly? I have no freaking clue. By the way, one thing you can really use to your advantage throughout this place is. Uh, the merry-go-round in the center of the arena. Give it a good spin, and you'll whack a bunch of Heartless that are surrounding it. And let me tell you, it's pretty nice to do. Nice one, Jack. <laughs> Way to go, dude. Was not expecting that. Christmas is in big trouble. Gorge, we can't let anything bad happen to Christmas. What about Hanukkah or Kwanzaa? Aren't they important, too? That's where Santa Claus lives. Okay, 
Well, glad that's taken care of as of right now. However, we still got some work to take care of as of yet. Also, I'm pretty sure that there's supposed to be a giant treasure chest that appears like towards uh, you know, uh, this particular place. However, I think in order to get it to spawn, you have to progress the story a bit within Halloween Town in order to uh, get it to show up. I can't say for sure. Regardless, though, it is something worth mentioning. Oof. Pretty nasty combo. Ow! God damn! Really? That killed me? Well, that was lame. Alright, why don't we try that again now, shall we? And hopefully not get our asses murdered. One thing's for sure, I definitely would like to try to show off uh, the Reflect spell. It hasn't exactly been easy to show off such a spell. Because it is a defensive spell that does require good timing in order to use properly. There is one more thing worth mentioning here, is that even though you're using party members to go into drive forms and stuff, they will still receive the same amount of experience versus, uh, versus them being on the field. So that is pretty nice. Here we go. Oh, hi. How y'all doing? Honestly, I feel as though the most dangerous enemies within this place, or within Halloween Town in general, are definitely those uh, evil jack-o'-lantern box... jack-in-the-box things. They're a bit of a weird hybrid. They're ugly. They need to be destroyed. Your name? Um, Sora, sir. Let's see. Sora. Here you are. I wonder how he found it without a last well, name. According to my list, Sora, seven years ago, you told everyone you did not believe in Santa Claus. Ooh, that is unfortunate. Ow! Uh. <laughs> Again, it's kind of weird how he's able to find them based on their first names. It's me, Jack. Jack Skellington? Uh oh. What the heck's going on in the what workshop? What sort of trouble did you bring this time? This time? It's a long story. Can you explain, please? That would be awesome to see. But uh, apparently we don't have time for explanations. Instead, we have puzzle pieces to pick up, some nice items, another map, and another sticker. <laughs> Cute. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. You can also talk to the elves too around here, but they don't really provide much of any information whatsoever. Maybe they'll give you some lore, but that's really about it. Anyway, let's head into the workshop and see what's going on. Why do we have to hide? Silence. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. That fool Jack brought Sora and the others with him. Now we can deal with all of them at once. What do you want us to do? Who's there? Busted! Oh! It's Luck, Shock, and Barrel. Not those three. 
I assure you they're not with us. Well, whatever the case, they've been quite naughty. Catch them and bring them back here. They're going to get a lecture. Uh, Mr. Claus, I wanted to talk to you about Christmas first. It'll have to wait. I need to see how things are progressing in my workshop. Come on, Jack. Let's catch those little pranksters. Oh. All right, then. <laughs> Poor Jack is all disappointed, but we do have a job to do here. Ooh, tracks. They must mean something. These footprints could lead to those three kids. Of course. <laughs> Would you expect them to lead you to Neverland? Of course, despite the fact that we dealt with these Heartless earlier, we technically went about two rooms away from uh, the Heartless spawn area, technically, so that's the reason why they respawn here. By the way, I haven't shown off the new uh, summon summoning yet. I will be doing so at some point in time, but obviously I can't really do that right now due to the fact that, well, <laughs> I'm kind of lacking in the drive gauge, you know? Alrighty. Let's get moving. Hello there, Heartless. How's everyone doing? Sit down. Okay. It's kind of strange how, uh, Lock, Shock, and Barrel are leaving footprints, even here in Halloween Town. Christmas Town, it makes sense, considering that they were traversing through snow and all. But here? It's a bit strange. What's this? I was so looking forward to destroying that ridiculous Christmas Town. But now that Sora and those imbeciles are here, I think a change of plan is called for. Revenge before pleasure, after all. Hang up, revenge! The magnificent, malevolent kind, of course. That sounds really bad! Like, Orgy's kind of bad! And that's super duper bad! Oogie Boogie. That bag of incensed insects. Hmm. How intriguing. And where might I find him? Jack and his dumb stupid friends destroyed him! Ah, yes. Now I remember. More intriguing still. I believe I'll bring your master back for you. Hmm, <laughs> that doesn't sound good. I mean, Oogie Boogie was a pretty dangerous foe. So, seeing that he may be coming back relatively soon, definitely not a good sign. That's for sure, Al. Now then, time to head into here after we deal with some more pests. Again, it's kind of surprising to see how much of a downsizing that the graveyard took in comparison to some of its previous iterations. It honestly is. And to be quite frank, I like it this way. I like it that it's nice and small and straight to the point. Nothing uh, too extreme and it's not overstaying its welcome. Unlike some of its uh, previous incarnations. Just saying. Alright, let's head on in. <laughs> I feel like a million bugs. <laughs> I really owe you one for this, Maleficent. Indeed you do, Oogie. Do you remember Sora, Donald, and Goofy? Do I remember them? Ah! You're too much! I'll never forget what they did to me! Uh, what was it they did to me? Squash you like a bug! That sounds bad. And Jack helped! Even worse! They creamed you! That's right. 
That's right. That's one thing I won't be forgetting anytime soon. It's the last thing I remember. And it's the only thing I'll remember until I teach those clowns not to mess with Mr. Oogie Boogie. Yes, that's right. That's the spirit. And I have the perfect plan already in mind. Have you ever heard of Christmas Town? Mr. Oogie! Wake up! Wake up! We want to see how bad you are! <sighs> it seems he needs more time to recover. You three, stay here and keep Sora and the others occupied. My heart is without you, but do not fail me. There they are. Stop them! Tie them down! Get them! <laughs> oh boy. Well, looks like Lock, Shock, and Barrel are truly experiencing the true meaning of mischief, like to the max. Anyway, this particular Heartless really shouldn't be too bad to take down. It honestly shouldn't. Some of the spells that it can throw at you, it really depends on uh, who the Heartless eats. If it eats Lock, Shock, or Barrel, it will fire a different sort of spell at you. If it fires a fireball at you, you can block it and send it flying right back at it, which is pretty nuts. As far as other spells are concerned, you know, you too can block it, which is uh, pretty nuts. Just saying. Ow. Hmm. I think if it's swallowed... Okay, I don't even know what I was trying to say. Regardless, what I was trying to say is, depending on uh, who this Heartless swallows, you can block most of the attacks from it, using either uh, Reflect or by using the Block Command. Oh dear. What are you going to do now, buddy? So yeah, the Reflect Command can also substitute Block as well, and it protects on all sides. Just keep in mind, though, that using Reflect does cost a pretty decent amount of MP. But it is definitely one of the best spells in the game, for sure. Especially considering if an enemy is at close range while you're using Reflect, it will also uh, bounce back any of the damage. And it'll hit him like a truck, let me tell you. Anyway, new move, Flash, Step, and Hyper Healing for Donald. Sweet. Again, pretty easy boss. <laughs> that was fun. Let's go see if Mr. Oogie's ready. Oogie? Boogie Woogie. <laughs> Isn't he the one who tried to take over Halloween Town before? That's him. Fellows, I hope you're ready for trouble. Better make it triple. Don't we have enough trouble already? Hmm, ain't that the truth? Confounded, and now I've lost my way. is utter foolishness. I should be getting ready for Christmas. Is that you, Mr. Santa Claus? Yes, but please call me Santa Claus. Of course. Mr. Santa Claus, I was hoping I'd find you here. You see, it's very important that you go back to Christmas Town. I'm afraid something terrible is going to happen if you don't. Well, I am behind on my preparations. 
All right. Tell Jack I'll be waiting for him at home. He had something to say to me about Christmas. But that's just it. Please, go home and lock the door. And if Jack knocks, don't open it. There. The large one in red. All I gotta do is kidnap him? That's right. Lock him up at once. Then begin destroying Christmas Town. That's sure to make Sora and the other fools come running. And then they're all mine! Yes. And in the meantime, I'll turn Santa Claus into Santa Heartless. <laughs> <laughs> Are we done? Who's there? I'm surprised that I didn't hear him until hear them until that particular moment in time. Also, why is it that Oogie Boogie didn't kidnap Sally too, just to hold her for ransom? What's wrong, Sally? Jack. Oogie's kidnapped Santa Claus. Oh no! And he's heading for Christmas Town. Come on, Jack, let's hurry. Indeed, we better get our butts moving. Otherwise, Santa Claus may become Santa Heartless sooner than we can freaking blink. Oogie kidnapped Santa Claus. He went through the door in the Hinderlands. You have to stop him. Duh. I'm on my way. Might as well get this party started. Also, it appears we have a new Heartless type here. <clears throat> Thankfully, it goes down pretty easily, much like the rest do. So long as you deal with it quickly. I'm pretty sure those uh, Heartless there are Wind Elemental Heartless. Again, I don't really know exactly what they're called, but their elements are fairly familiar to me. Wait, something's not quite right. I know what it is. We just need a little more of that oogie flair. I do hope our jolly old friend is looking forward to becoming a heartless. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Clumsy oaf. Are you still here? Why don't you boogie on back where you came from? You're crabbing my style. Have you already forgotten who brought you back, you insolent bag of bugs? Mm, sorry. Can't remember a thing. Very well, you ingrate. You'll rue the day you spurn my help. What's really funny is that Oogie unintentionally saved Santa from becoming a Heartless. It's kind of hilarious if you think about it. Not sure what the point was of uh, saving Santa like that. Perhaps just to torture him. But even so, it's kind of weird. I wonder why Sally decided to follow us. Honestly, I'm kind of concerned for her safety. Why is she here? Pretty sure she'll end up getting herself uh, kidnapped sooner than we can freaking blink, you know? That's definitely not going to be fun to deal with for anyone here. Especially for Jack, if you know what I mean. Let's check out Genie summoning now, shall we? Anyway, Genie summoning and how this works is that he can uh, mimic one of your drive forms and has a different sort of limit for each of the particular drive forms. His uh, whips. Oops, I did not mean to dismiss him. Dang it. Um. Anyway, his uh, valor limit is also completely different. Again, I'll have to summon him again just to show that particular limit off sometime. Obviously, right now, I can't really do that, given the circumstances. 
Okay, then. Well, that was definitely a fun experience. Genie's uh, summon really isn't all that spectacular, but it can be helpful. About her being kidnapped. Jack Skellington! A hoogie! <laughs> you and I have a score to settle, Jack. Same goes for your little sidekicks. What are you planning to do with Sandy Claus? Who? Sandy Claus? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> And why is this roly-poly red guy here? Time to go, Grandpa! Uh. Ooh, a leg. Uh. Mr. Santa Claus! Nope! Don't think so. Why you Alrighty, folks, welcome to Oogie Boogie's boss fight. This is gonna be a fun one. So, for this fight, we're gonna be constantly running on the conveyor belt, and of course, it's gonna keep changing uh, directions. Well, okay, no, it's not gonna be doing that necessarily, but what it's actually gonna be doing is that at the end of the conveyor belt, the lights at the very end will change from red to blue, as you can see. And depending on uh, what the color is, it, uh, it'll determine where you'll end up if you have to uh, pursue Oogie Boogie. Right now, it's a good idea to not to not leave the first conveyor belt because that's where Oogie is. Also, I'm pretty sure Oogie has like invulnerability frames. After you deal enough damage to him, Oogie will uh, then speed up the conveyor belts temporarily. That is until until about five or so seconds later. And again, I feel as though this particular boss fight really isn't that hard. Honestly, I feel as though the hardest part is just dodging certain obstacles as they come flying your way. Also, don't hang too far back, otherwise you may end up regretting it and your life will be forfeit. So at this point, Oogie moved over to the left conveyor belt. So we gotta wait for the lights to change to the correct color so we can warp to the correct conveyor belt. There we go. I'm pretty sure your friends will automatically teleport to you if, uh, if you happen to be a little too far behind. Also, when Oogie Boogie is knocked down, you need to smack the ever-loving crap out of him immediately. And again, after enough smacks, he will temporarily become invincible for a bit. So be sure to keep that in mind. One more thing worth mentioning, too, is that if all three lights are the same color, you cannot teleport to, that, to any conveyor belt. So, that is something else worth mentioning. Also, get used to hearing Oogie Boogie say, That's right! Away you go! 
Okay, come on. Let's switch. Thank you. Also, I'm pretty sure if uh, Heartless are on one conveyor belt and you move to another, the Heartless do not warp with you. They'll just nope the F out of there. So, that is one way to get rid of uh, any Heartless that you may have to deal with. Nice prediction. <laughs> it is pretty annoying how uh, you can't jump from one conveyor belt to another, as there are invisible walls holding you in place. But even so, this boss fight really is nothing at all. Oogie, just sit down. Goodbye. Here he goes. <laughs> also, Goofy learned once more. That's awesome to see. Dead. <sighs> All right, Christmas is safe again. And apparently, I missed a treasure chest. Perfect. I'd better get down to business. <laughs> Yup, you ought to stick to Halloween and spooky stuff. Jack. Here, it's done. Wonderful. Why, I love it. Thank you, Sally. Jack, do you really have to do this? But I make a splendid Sandy Claus. Uh, listen here, Jack Skellington. You saved me in Christmas as well, and for that I'm very grateful. But please promise you won't cause any more trouble. And about that suit. Don't even think about taking over from me again. I just thought you could use a little help this year, Mr. Claus. You must be exhausted from all the preparations. And I wouldn't mind a second chance to get this Christmas thing right. <sighs> Yes, being Santa Claus can be tiring. But let me tell you something, Jack. Seeing the happy faces of little children when they discover the presents I've brought them makes it all worthwhile, year after year after year. And you, Jack, you love to make them gasp and see them shiver with fright. What if someone tried to take all of that away from you? We both have very important jobs to do, Jack. Mine is to take care of Christmas, and yours is to take care of Halloween. So we each have to do the very best we can. After all, you're the face of Halloween, Mr. Jack Skellington. The Pumpkin King, the Knight of Nightmares. And even though you're fascinated with Christmas, Jack, Halloween is your true specialty. Don't you see? Our children rely on both of us to do our jobs. Halloween needs your attention, and I know Christmas needs mine. Urgently. You're right. I am the master of terror. And if Halloween has become too routine, all I have to do is think of something new that'll really make them scream. Jack! Oh, Jack! Hey, Mr. Mayor, what are you doing here? I've been looking for you everywhere. We must go over the plans for next Halloween. I can't do a thing without your approval. Why? So true. Good luck, Jack Skellington. Well, there he goes. Yes, and I've got lots of names to check and preparations to finish. Ooh. Oh, What's this? Jack, this is no time for joking. What's this? Perhaps a bit too festive for our Halloween needs. <laughs> well, don't worry about that, Jack, because that is soon going to be taken care of.
We better get going. Before you do, Sora, I believe there's a friend of yours who, if I recall correctly, was the one who told you there's no such thing as Santa Claus? Oh, yeah. He did say that. Be sure to give him my very best wishes. I will, but... Do you know where I can find Riku? No, but don't give up. Remember, if you believe in Riku, you will find him. Just as you found me. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Santa. That is actually some pretty useful life advice. I mean, it sounds kind of cliche, sure, but still, pretty damn good. Anywho, we have ourselves the Magnet Element. It emits a power that draws in the enemy. Used from the Magic Command, MP cost is 30. Again, pretty useful spell, but not really one that caters to my playstyle personally. But it does have its uses, trust me. And that takes care of Halloween Town for now, folks. <laughs> That is awesome to see. So, our next stop in today's trip is a brand new world known as the Pride Lands, aka the world of the Lion King. Let's land and get ready for some fun. Hmm. Talk about a nightmare, am I right? Anyway, welcome to the Pride Lands. Hey, check us out. <laughs> this place is kind of creepy, though. Mm How -hmm. you doing? Yeah, that's right. Don't be silly. We love you to stick around for lunch. Um, we didn't bring anything to eat. <laughs> that's not gonna be a problem. Gorsh, Sora. I think we're the lunch. <laughs> Again, Goofy's the smart one in this universe. somewhere man that 
that scar's got the worst timing? Just let him roll up. Nah, we better go see what he wants. Sounds like he's grumpy enough already. Ugh, <sighs> fine. I don't know what that was about, but I'm glad it's over. <sighs> Everything's harder on four legs. Why you start practicing? Well, I found a trick to it. Here, let me show you. <laughs> well, there's really not much of a trick when it comes to moving around on four legs. <laughs> also, nice map. Anyway, as I mentioned before, this entire world is entirely optional. So if anyone's watched the speedrun of Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, you know, nobody ever sees this world in a speedrun because it's not a part of the any percent category. In fact, I am not sure, but I feel so there's an all worlds category or yeah, there's actually a Jimmy's Journal 100% category, in which case you do have to come here during that particular category. But other than that, though, most people don't see this world very much, as I mentioned before. It is entirely optional. Also, while we're exploring in this uh, new world, we're going to be constantly within this uh, lion form, and it has its own fair share of abilities, which I will be going over momentarily. First, we have Flash Step. Unleashes a guard piercing attack on a slightly distant target while keeping up your own guard. Interesting. Anything else? No. But we do have a new ability for Donald, Hyper Healing. Click quickly revives fallen party member and greatly restores their HP. Hmm, that's neat. Um okay. Goofy we have once more. And again, I'm going to be equipping that ability at some point. I also forgot to show off uh, Goofy's teamwork ability. Oh well, it is what it is. Anyway, Sora's lion abilities. He has combo upper aerial impulse, finishing blast, uh, retaliating slash, scan aerial recovery combo plus, multiply that by two, same with air combo plus, uh, combo boost, reaction boost, finishing plus, damage drive, summon boost, and experience boost, leaf bracer, magic lock on, draw, lucky lucky, multiply that by two, item boost, MP, hastera, and that is it. Overall, uh, Lion Sora has a lot of pretty spectacular abilities. And while you're exploring this world, you are gonna be in this form at all times. And as such, I don't think Sora can use drive forms as far as I know. But it appears he can still use summons, I think. I can't really say for sure if that's the case or not. Regardless though, for the most part, you don't really need those particular abilities while you're exploring the Pride Lands. Honestly, it's a better idea and more productive to just run around in this regular form. Oh boy. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? What? What do we do? Beat the shit out of them, of course. Stay back. Okay, time to deal with the usual heartless crowd. One more thing I haven't mentioned yet is that, uh... Oh dear. Hm. Thanks, Donald. Thanks for the heals. And don't... People say Donald doesn't heal ya. What kind of crazy nonsense is that? <laughs> I will say this, these enemies here can really be... can really pack quite a punch if you're not prepared. There we go. All done. Had a couple of close calls, though. Definitely heartless. Thank you. You really saved me. We're just glad you're okay. Did you see any other heartless around here? Heartless? Is that what they're called? I'm not sure if there are any others. I don't usually hunt outside the Pride Lands. Pride Lands? Hey, do you know if a guy named Riku is there? Or some bad guys in Black Hoods? Or maybe this really big bully named Pete? 
<sighs> oh well, we might as well go take a look anyway. Wait, the Pride Lands are dangerous. Scar and the hyenas have made things unbearable for everyone. There's no food left. They've driven off the prey. We're about to starve. We can handle a little danger. You just saw us beat those heartless, didn't you? I guess you're right. You could be just what the kingdom needs. Maybe you can help us. You mean take on this Scar guy and all those hyenas? Scar? He took over when our last king, Mufasa, died. So you're saying this guy's your king? You want us to take down your king? Wait just a minute. We can't just go around knocking kings off their thrones. Then again, if they see that I'm stronger than their king, maybe they'll ask me to be their next king. Sora. <laughs> I'd have to refuse, of course. Still, I'd like to see the Pride Lands, so you guys don't mind lending them a paw, do you? She's gonna go on ahead and tell the other lionesses. We're supposed to meet her at a place called Pride Rock. Hmm. Pride Rock, eh? One of the most iconic locations in any Disney film or anything ever. Just saying. <laughs> What's really funny is that Pride Rock is referenced quite a bit within, uh, well, okay, not really referenced officially, but more like referenced by the community within a, another video game called Call of Duty Black Ops on one particular map, and that map is none other than Jungle. There's a pretty popular power position slash camping spot, and the community dubbed it Pride Rock because it looks similar to said location. Even though it's not, but still, just saying. <laughs> it's kind of funny if you really think about it. Okay. Man, I'm already starting to sweat. <laughs> I think I'm going to go ahead and turn on my fan real quick, so excuse me for a second. Mm. Okay. Again, I did not want to turn on the AC because, as I've mentioned earlier, that makes way too much noise. Believe me. <laughs> it's like, if you think a PlayStation 4 is loud, you have not heard my air conditioner. Just saying. That thing is loud, even in the quiet mode. Just saying. It's not exactly pleasing to the ears. So again... Just gonna have to keep the noise down by keeping the AC off, at least for the time being. Of course, I'll probably be turning it on after today's stream. Figure I'd throw it out there. One other thing I haven't mentioned about the Pride Lands yet is that while you're running around this world, Sora moves a lot faster as compared to his regular form. How is this possible exactly? Well, that is actually pretty simple. It's because of the fact that Sora is traversing on all fours. And that is the reason. That's the reason why he's able to move so freaking fast. And believe it or not, we can go even faster than this. Although we can't really uh, do that as of yet. But we'll be able to do so soon enough, trust me. Again, we'll be moving around at the speed of sound soon enough. As far as my opinions when it comes to this world, I definitely like it. It's definitely one of the more unique worlds of this game. And it's kind of sad to see that uh, not a lot of people come here, as far as I know. At least uh, outside of casual playthroughs, that is. Casual playthroughs, yeah, of course people are going to come here. I mean, it is a new world, and it's worth exploring for sure. But, again, if you're in the speedrunning community, especially in the Kingdom Hearts speedrunning community, yeah, you're not seeing this world very much, unless it's for 100% completion. Just saying. Also, apologies if uh, my frame rate on my webcam suddenly decreased. 
not sure why this is. I think it's just due to the fact that the exposure is uh, set to its default value. Honestly, I kept it there because everything looked fine, as far as I could tell, earlier before starting today's stream and while I was making adjustments. Anyway, let's head on over to Pride Rock! <coughs> Excuse me. That's him. Rafiki, you might be able to help us force Scar and the Hyenas out of the Pride Lands. But he says it won't work. You see, whoever saves the Pride Lands will be our next king. And he has to have the right qualities. Meaning? I think she means you're not cut out for the job, Sora. <sighs> I'm sorry you came all this way. Hey, no, it's okay. You better go before Scar finds out you're here. I'm really sorry. It's fine. Might as well try to beat the crap out of Scar anyway, even if we don't meet the qualifications of becoming the next king of the Pride Lands, you know. <laughs> anyway, before we continue, definitely worth uh, exploring a little bit. As of course, uh, the Pride Lands are pretty big and barren as crap. <laughs> Given that state. Oh, hi. How y'all doing? Well, this hey, was unexpected. Snack. Snack. Nah. Mm -mm. Got us a three <laughs> <close to me. laughs> uh, Hmm. My back. What are you doing here? Oh, the cute little kitty's worried about me. If I were you, I'd be more worried about my friends. Cherry! We're surrounded! Go on, ladies. You've got some hunting to do. The herds have moved on, Scar. We can't hunt in a land with no prey. No prey? Then what do you call this? We're not prey. Oh, nice and fresh, too. Well, they're all yours, Scar. <laughs> oh. Run! Follow me! Hmm, that was quick. I'm sorry I got you involved in this. It's no big deal. We're used to it. Oh, it's not your fault. Sora wouldn't be a, wouldn't be a good king. <laughs> hey, I had the right to give it a try, right? So, so you did want to become king. Well, you know. Uh, Nala, isn't there anybody else who could be king? There was, but he died when he was just a cub. He was the son of our last king, Mufasa. If only Simba were here. Simba? But Simba's just fine. He was fighting right beside us not that long ago. You mean Simba's alive? But where is he? That I don't know. Still, Simba's alive. I can't believe it. Please, tell me more about him. Of course. But first, we should get away from Scar. We'll, we'll go through Wild, Wilderbeast uh, Alley, or Valley. My god, I can't read. He won't follow us there. Are you sure about that? 
You never know. I wanted to explore Pride the Rock a little more, but it doesn't look like I'm going to get the chance to do that, unfortunately. Which does kind of suck. But, alas, it is what it is. It's fine. We can deal with this. It's really no problem, honestly. We'll come back later anyway, so, again, no big deal. Why the long face, Simba? You gotta lighten up and live a little. Yeah, yeah. What were you thinking about? Let me guess. The past, right? Mm. Hakuna Matata! Would you look how he's grown, Pumba? Why, when I rescued the little guy, he was only this big. He was actually bigger than you, even at his cub age. Rafiki was right. What? Never mind, it's not important. Here, I'll show you how. You can do it. Hmm, kind of strange how she just showed us how to execute this off screen. Anyway, we now learned the dash ability. And since we are technically in this form, Sora has this ability permanently equipped at all times. So, to execute the dash, you just simply hold the square button. And like I said earlier, you can move a hell of a lot faster with the dash. Albeit you lose a lot of uh, control while you're dashing. So, be sure to keep that in mind. Yoink. I will say, the dash ability is very useful for getting around the Pride Lands incredibly quickly. Like, probably the fastest uh, form of uh, mobility there is. By the way, if you want to stop dashing, like if you want to fight some Heartless to get some materials, or if you just need to fight Heartless to gain some experience, or if you want to grab some treasures, just simply release the square button and you'll be fine. By the way, I'm pretty sure you can make uh, certain jumps by dashing and then pushing the circle button shortly thereafter, but I can't say for sure. Also, apologies for the fan. I know it sounds like a dying cat, but I want to keep myself cool somehow. I wonder how Rafiki when even his father King Mufasa died. We were told that Simba died alongside him. Who told you that? Scar? That's a yes. What's up, Rafiki? It is time. It's 
Time for what? Time to dance? It must be Simba. Sora, hurry! Wait up. It's funny how uh, Nala joins the party temporarily, but she's more of a guest and not one who uh, can fight alongside us. It's kind of a, a bit baffling how that's the case, but still. I'm not a game designer. I can't really say how things are supposed to work or how they're supposed to not work, you know? Okay. Well, that was definitely a fun experience. <laughs> I also wanted to take care of that other Heartless who despawned. <laughs> Open up. Hmm. Again, like I said, the Pride Lands are probably one of my uh, more favorite worlds to explore in Kingdom Hearts too. Just solely due to the fact that uh, we have a very unique mechanic of just moving around and fighting. It's kind of a shame that uh, we never have something like this uh, happen again in uh, other parts of the series. As far as I know. Not even in Kingdom Hearts 3, which is kind of a shame. Also sweet, I learned once more. Definitely gonna be needing that. Cure pellet, please. Goodbye. That was actually pretty close, not gonna lie. Alrighty then, time to equip once more and also reaction boost. Here we go, once more. Ensures one HP remains after taking damage from a combo. Extremely well needed. Just saying. One more thing worth mentioning is that the treasure chests in this world are very unique looking and have a very unique shape. And these uh, particular treasure chests are not seen ever again. It's kind of uh, interesting to see. Again, like I mentioned, this is definitely probably one of the most unique worlds you can ever explore in the Kingdom Hearts universe, in my opinion. Alright, let's deal with some more fools. What's also pretty cool about, uh, maneuvering as, a uh, Lion Sora is that you can use a lot of magic while also staying on the move at the same time, which is pretty nuts. It's almost like you're in wisdom form, but not quite. It's kind of weird to explain, but this kind of mobility you don't really see all that much unless, again, you're using either wisdom form or a future form, which we'll be getting our hands on later. Okay. It appears that we cannot use drive forms or summons in this world. I thought you could use summons still, but no. Apparently I misremembered that. Oh well, it is what it is. Uh oh. It's Simba and he's in trouble. Pretty sure he should be able to handle himself. But yet, it seems like he's all but given up. But, whoa. Simba. Okay, never mind. Uh, it's me, Sora. Donald and Goofy are here too. Sora, Donald, Goofy. <laughs> what happened to you? Uh oh. Help, Simba! Help! She's gonna eat us! Timon! Pumba! Something must have happened in the jungle. I have to go help my friends. Okay, 
We'll back you up. And we will be backing her, him up momentarily. First off, Oasis map, along with a few other things worth picking up too. <coughs> Excuse me. There also appears to be a Moogle shop here and one more giant chest. What do we got here? Torn pages, of course. Again, pages I want to set on fire and never look back. But I know if I do that, then every Disney fan is going to hang me on a freaking cross. <laughs> okay. This sticker can be kind of difficult to get your hands on. This is one of those things where you got to get a good running start and then jump for it. Again, this is a lot easier said than done because while dashing, you lose basically all control. Okay, it appears that in order to execute a dash, you do have to be moving. There we go. <laughs> that took a few tries. But, whatever. I'll take it. Let's see what we got. Anything new? Well, no new, uh... Actually, never mind. We got several new items. We have the Lord's Broom and the Dream Cloud. For both Donald and Goofy, respectively. So, yoink! And gimme. Let's see, can we make anything new? Well, we got a nice defense boost for completing the collection. Make that too. And a magic boost. Also, dark, shells, dark shards can now be purchased from the shop. Cool. That's awesome to see. Awesome to see. Looks like we can make a mithril ring and a soldier's ring now. That's awesome. Let's see, I think I'm gonna go ahead and make one of these. Give me that. And boom. Say hello to the Soldier's Ring. Highly increases maximum AP and strength. Pretty nice. Now for the Mithril Ring. Boom and boom. Increases magic and extremely increases max AP. Definitely an excellent item to have. Now for Moogle Level 5. Rank C recipe materials cut in half. Item and creations can be synthesized using only half the materials. So, any C-rank uh, items that previously required uh, a bunch of items, now they don't require as many to make them, so that's pretty sweet. Of course, we still got a ways to go to uh, increase our Moogle level to its absolute max, and I'm not 100% sure what the actual max is. I feel it's though uh, the max Moogle level you can get is 10, but I can't say for sure. Okay, I'm gonna... Equip Sora with the Garnet Ring. And I think I'll give him the Soldier Ring. As far as you are concerned, Donald, I will give you the Mithril Ring. And let's see what else. I think you're good with that. Goofy, I'm going to give him something else, I think. Or maybe not. Okay, then. I'm cool with this. Everything's good to go. Might as well use the boosts I have for Sora. And like I said, use boosts on Sora and Sora alone until you can't do so anymore. And what's really funny is that there is an actual limit that you can hit when it comes to AP, magic, etc. Just saying. Okay, let's go ahead and equip the new weapons for Donald and Goofy, respectively. Might as well, am I right? They are stronger, after all. Whenever you get a new weapon, most of the time you should just equip it immediately, with the exception of Sora and Keyblades. You need to pay close attention to uh, their descriptions and their weapon abilities, as well as their stats. As you never know, you may end up hurting yourself more than trying to enhance your own abilities. Trust me. Anyway, off to the jungle. We got fun and games. Simba, wait! Please leave 
It's Nala. Don't you recognize her? Nala? It's me, Simba. Simba! You are alive! Hey, what's going on here? It's a long story. <laughs> well, that's a nice hello. Don't worry. They're all friends of mine. So that means nobody's planning to eat anybody else for lunch, right? Mm-hmm. Well, are you sure they don't want to eat me? Like I'm some kind of pig? Technically you are. But you are a pig, right? That's well, Mr. Mr. Pig. <laughs> <laughs> Could you guys excuse us for a few minutes? Why am I not surprised? Might as well catch up with your old friend, am I right? Simba, you've got to come back to Pride Rock. I thought Sora might be able to help, but you're the only one who can save us from Scar. I can't go back. Why? Hakuna Matata. It's something I learned out here. Sometimes bad things happen, and there's nothing you can do about it. Actually, that is completely wrong. Simba? Hakuna? Matata! Hakuna? Matata! He's not the Simba I remember. Something about Hakuna Matata. <laughs> Sounds like a drink. <laughs> Kidding. But, seriously though, not exactly the biggest fan of that song in the movie. It's just, I'm not sure what it is. It's, I mean, everyone has their own preferences. And, oddly enough, <laughs> it's probably the most popular song in the entire movie. But, honestly, the best song in the movie, in my opinion, is Be Prepared. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, Be Prepared is the best song, period. Come at me, bro. I wonder what's up Simba's ass. My father's dead, and it's because of me. It's my fault. No, it is not. Go back. It won't change anything. Look at the stars. The great kings of the past look down on us from those stars. So whenever you feel alone, just remember that those kings will always be there to guide you. And so will I. Father, are you there? Simba, you have forgotten who you are. You must take your place in the circle of life. How can I go back? I'm not who I used to be. Remember who you are. You can all come out now. Hmm. I'm going back to face my past. I could use your help. Well, that was quick. He really is a king. Anyway, after completing about 50% of the Bride Lance, we get ourselves a new Keyblade, the Circle of Life. Has great strength, increasing MP restoration by 25% after MP is consumed. Overall, pretty damn awesome Keyblade, all things considered. 
So Simba joins the party, and again he has his own fair share of abilities, much like everyone else. And also he has his own limit, which I will be showing off momentarily, probably within the next battle or two. Anyway, uh, before we continue, let's go ahead and equip the new Keyblade. Again, it raises your strength by one, and also drops your magic value by one. Not a big deal, but I am happy with the uh, auto haste, that's for sure. Also, you can't uh, mess around with sub weapons while you're exploring the Pride Lands, so be sure to keep this in mind. If you get any new weapons, you will have to wait a bit until you land in another world where you can mess around with sub weapons. But for now, though, we're good with what we have. Let's go ahead and get moving after I remove these items from Simba. There we go. All better. There is one more thing worth mentioning here. Um, looking at uh, both Timon and Pumbaa's character model here, in the original PlayStation 2 release, these, these two characters in particular were nightmare fuel. How? Well, let's just say this. They had the same problem with uh, their character models as Mickey did in Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days. And that is, they have a permanent smile on their face that makes them look extremely creepy, especially with the soulless dead eyes. <laughs> just to add that much more to the creep factor. But thankfully with the HD 2.5 as well as the uh, HD 1.5 plus 2.5 remix on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, the character models were updated to make them look a lot less creepy and actually look normal now. So they actually look like frickin' Timon and Pumbaa. Proper. Just saying. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is. Why is it that the Kingdom Hearts has this weird fixa fixation of giving people permanent smiles on their face? It's like this one episode of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius. Anyone remember that show? Where the episode, I believe it's called One of Us, where the same sort of thing was happening to the residents in Retroville after watching a particular TV show where they are being stripped of their humanity and were being forced to be happy all the time. It was like that, but in Kingdom Hearts form. Yeah. At least back in the PS2 days, as well as Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days on the DS, to be specific. Just saying. But like I said early, earlier though, Thankfully, that problem has been all but eradicated as of right now, which is awesome to see. One thing I kind of wonder is, recently a new Kingdom Hearts game was announced for uh, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, as well as Nintendo Switch. And this new Kingdom Hearts game is not a traditional one, it's another spinoff much like uh, Rechain of Memories is, or Chain of Memories in general. It's a... Uh, it's basically an action rhythm based game, which is pretty interesting. It has an interesting premise. What's even more interesting is that it's the first Kingdom Hearts game to appear on Nintendo Switch. The HD collections of Kingdom Hearts have not appeared on the console as of yet, which I find kind of interesting. I mean, it took a pretty good long time for even the Xbox crew to receive both Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 plus 2.5 Remix. They received that, like, right after they received Kingdom Hearts 3, which is pretty insane. I'm kind of surprised that Nintendo Switch hasn't gotten the Kingdom Hearts series on, on there as of yet. <laughs> I mean, Kingdom Hearts 3 I can understand, as that is an Unreal Engine 4 game. But... There are plenty of RE, uh, Unreal Engine 4 games on Switch that do work. But... Again, kind of weird how Kingdom Hearts is not on Switch Wait yet. Wait a minute, we're gonna fight your uncle for this? Yes, Timon. This is my home. 
and it's time to take that home back with style. Hi, Scar. Simba, you're alive. This kingdom doesn't belong to you. Simba's the rightful king. The choice is yours, Scar. Either step down or fight. Must this all end in violence? I'd hate to be responsible for the death of a family member, Simba. I'd put the past behind me. But what about your faithful subjects, have they? Simba, what's he talking about? Go on, tell them who's responsible for Mufasa's death. I am. <gasps> he admits it, murderer. If it weren't for you, Mufasa would still be alive. Do you deny it? No, but it was an accident. You're in trouble again, but this time, Daddy isn't here to save you. And now? Everyone knows why. Now that this looks familiar, I think I've seen this before. Oh, yes. I remember. This is just the way your father looked before he died. And here's my little secret. I killed Mufasa. Murderer! Tell them the truth! All right, all right. I did it. Louder! I killed Mufasa! <laughs> Simba, you get Scar. We'll handle these guys. Nice one, guys. Hmm. Alrighty then. Well, at this point, Simba is temporarily out of the party for a little bit. And there's a perfectly good reason for this as well. He is currently in pursuit of Scar because, well, he did recently admit to everyone here that he was the one who murdered Mufasa in the first place. Also, it's kind of weird how, uh, uh, no. I almost called Scar Mufasa. My God, what's wrong with me? Anyway, as I was trying to say, it's kind of weird to see how, uh, Scar reacted to, uh, the fact that Simba was indeed alive. I guess he just did that for show, but he knows oh too damn well that they're very much alive. Or at least he's very much alive. Considering that he was the one who uh, persuaded Simba to run away and never return. <laughs> there we go. But seriously though, that is a bit of a weird reaction. Again, I think it's just due to the fact that he was putting on a show for all the other lionesses here. Alright, let's go. So, for this particular fight, we do have to protect both Timon and Pumbaa as they're being pursued by the hyenas. If their damage is exceeding... If their damage bar reaches the top, then, again, just like everything else, it's game over. Ow! God damn! <laughs> well, I just got my ass kicked. Ow! <laughs> also, I'm pretty sure I just left the treasures behind. Crud. Oh well, if I get killed again, it really won't be that big of a deal. It'll just mean I can uh, just go back and grab the treasures once more. Anyway, we're going to be fighting like three separate bosses at once, which is uh, pretty insane if you think about it. 
Also, you may see a reaction command called call over. If that pops up, then uh, feel free to hit the button. As it will call both Timon and Pumbaa over here towards a safe location. Just keep in mind, though, that they can still get killed if you're not careful. Also, don't be reckless with the command, either. Especially if you're in the middle of fighting one of the hyenas. There we go. That took a little bit. But hey, at least Adidas done. Well, better go pursue him right after we head outside if we can. And thankfully we can do just that. Wow, I'm kind of surprised I managed to get that like first try this time. <laughs> That's pretty nuts. Okay. There we go. One other thing worth mentioning is that while you're dashing, if you do come to a stop, it does take a bit of time to come to said stop. As it is kind of realistic in that sense, how uh, you can't just come to a dead stop right away when you're running at the speed of sound. Just saying. There we are. He needs to handle this himself. This fight, Donald. I wonder why this whole fight is in slow motion. I guess for dramatic effect. But still, it's kind of distracting. Nope! Bye! You're okay. Oh, that was just a sneak preview. Cause this ain't over. Oh, not by a long shot. Uh-oh. Jealousy turned the King of Pride Rock into a heartless. Oh, your kingdom's gonna rise again. But this time, as the Pride Lands of Darkness. That's what you think. <laughs> oh boy. So for this battle, Simba rejoins our party and he will, uh, he is a forced party member, so you cannot switch him out. It is pretty cool how uh, suddenly this whole land is surrounded in darkness. So, pretty interesting. Also, here is Simba's Limit. This limit really isn't that good when it comes to dealing with single targets, but it's excellent for crowd control. Also, while Scar is in his heartless form, as you can see here, he really can pack a hell of a punch if you're not careful. His pounces really are lit. <laughs> I don't know what else to say to that. Oh dear. Oof. Wow, thanks Donald. I don't know what I'd do without ya. Also, I'm pretty sure uh, Simba just got some additional items when he rejoined the party. I can't say for sure if that's really the case or not. One more thing worth mentioning here is that while Scar is running around in that darkness-like attack, 
Oh dear, this is gonna hurt. Anyway, as I was trying to say, while he's running around in that darkness-like form, he is invincible for the time being. As far as other attacks is concerned, he will be using basically all the powers of the elements to try and murder your face in. Honestly, I feel as though uh, his thunder attack is probably the most dangerous out of all of them, in my opinion. But other than that, though, he really isn't too bad. You finish, Scar? Yeah, he did. Alrighty, folks, we're pretty much done here. Also, say hello to probably the most badass keyhole ceiling sequence in the entire game. Kinda wish you could wield a keyblade with your tail in game, but alas, it is what it is. Hey! What's with the light show? We have to say goodbye for a little while. I'll go tell Simba! Oh, he's probably busy. Just tell him we'll be back soon. Oh, that's right. He's king now. He's gonna be so busy, he'll probably forget about his two best buddies. Well, you always got Hakuna Matata, right? Guess so. What do you mean, guess so? But what if he forgets to tell the carnivores who we are? <laughs> One look at you, and you're a pig roast! That's Mr. Pin Roast. Same thing! And I'm not sticking around to be anybody's pork dinner! Boomba! <laughs> you can never forget your true buddies. Ha! <laughs> Funny how he says that. Anyway, we received another fire element, so what this means is that our fire spell has been upgraded from fire to fire -a. Flames appear and revolve around you. Use from the match command and be cost is 12. Also, whenever you get a new uh, spell upgrade, it replaces your old spell. So, that is something worth mentioning. And after completing the Pride Lands, a new episode is added. So, in other words, I think that means that uh, Olympus Coliseum has a new tournament available. At least I'm pretty sure that is how it's supposed to work. Anyway, before we continue, let's head into Twilight Town. We haven't been here in forever. Might as well, right? And besides, the game tells us to go here anyway. Help! The sandlot! It's Cypher! What's help wrong? Please help us! What's wrong, Vivi? Sounds like we've got trouble. Since that's the case, we better get our butts moving and figure out what the hell this problem is. And hopefully solve it lickety-split, if you know what I mean. Uh-oh. Nobody's. Hmm. 
Seems like the Nobis have invaded Twilight Town. I wonder what that's all about. They're probably here for Roxas, but... Joke's on them. Roxas was never really here. Ha! <laughs> Kidding. But you know what I mean. Also, we have a new uh, Nobody type here. These enemies, I think, are called Berserkers. The Berserkers really aren't that bad, for the most part. They're probably one of the more annoying enemies in the game, considering that the, their giant sword acts like a shield. At some point, you can actually pick up their sword and use it as a reaction command and use it against any and all nobis in the area. While in that berserk state, any Heartless that you're touching will automatically fly towards you and will gather all around you. So that is pretty neat. Also, Berserkers make a pretty good candidate for uh, using uh, not just Thunder, but also the Reflect spell. If you're close enough and you have really good timing, you can use the Reflect spell to completely decimate them quickly. Well, that was kind of wasted. It is pretty interesting to see how uh, you can technically counter these guys. Also, I'm pretty sure they go into this state when they're uh, low on HP. And I'm pretty sure they'll do this constantly. Unless you're able to block them before they go into that berserk state. If you manage to block them, then you'll be able to stun them. Hello. By the way, have you seen a man named Axel? I expect he's here somewhere. Like I care. You see, Axel's no longer acting in our best interest. Is he with the organization too? Yes. You have a front? Not a very organized organization. Don't let your guard down. Axel will stop at nothing to turn you into a heartless. Gee, thanks for looking out for us, mister. But I'm sure we can take care of ourselves just fine. Glad to hear it. Axel aside, it would break our hearts to hear something happen to you. Hearts? You don't have any hearts. True, we don't have hearts. But we remember what it was like. That's what makes us special. What do you mean? We know very well how to injure a heart. Sora, you just keep on fighting those heartless. Let's jump in after him. How come? I'm not sure, but maybe he'll lead us to the organization's world. Don't be reckless. Do you want to end up like Riku? What? He's like, come along and find out if you hey, want to experience wait. it. What did he mean? End up like Riku. Hey, how about you get out of my town now? You've caused enough trouble. Excuse me, but we're the ones who saved your asses. Come on, guys. Hold it. Make up your mind. This goes to the strongest guy in Twilight Town. Thanks, but we don't really need it. Whoa! It's like, just take it. Oh, Sora! Hey, um, Pence. Pence, right? Do you know a girl named Kyrie? K Kyrie? I sure do. Uh, then you better come to the station. Hmm, that sounds interesting. Anyway, we obtained Cypher's Trophy. Trophy obtained from Cypher. It is decorated with four crystal orbs. Honestly, this is probably one of the more useless items in the game. Also, we have another absent silhouette here. 
It's an absent silhouette, a shadowy presence within an emblem. Who cares? <laughs> We're not going to be worrying about this right now, not until post-game, like I mentioned before. Again, I can't really remember exactly how many absent silhouettes there are throughout the entire game, but I think that's like the third one we've encountered so far. Hey! Hey, Hainer. Hey, Ouellette. Hey, so how do you guys know Kyrie? Has something happened to her? Kyrie was really here? Yeah. And she said she was looking for you. Tell me where she is. Well... My romantic story. If you stick around, Zor's bound to show up. Yeah, he said he's coming back. Okay. What took you so long, Kyrie? Somehow... I just knew you'd be here. I tell you, Kyrie, you've got a lot of guts jumping right into the darkness like that. How the hell did you guys miss? And why is it that Kyrie didn't fight back? Seriously, how did you guys miss? Kyrie. You think it might have been Axel? Sorry. Hey, it's not your fault. Come on, cheer up. Like I can even say that. I gotta Go help on. Kyrie. That was close. Hmm. Hmm. This blue spear looks kind of familiar. Hmm. That's the same as the one we have in that little sack. Interesting. He wasn't himself for a second there. Oh, hello. Where are you now? Another keyhole opening. Oh, that was quick. Probably the quickest he keyhole to seal yet. <laughs> Just saying. is open and Kyrie and Riku are waiting somewhere along it you'd better hurry then you coming back promise believe me we will indeed be back here again trust me anyway after completing that short segment we get ourselves a new keyblade the oath keeper enhances magic and increases the duration of a drive form pretty nice and we also get ourselves a new form, and one that's exclusive to the final mix versions of Kingdom Hearts 2. And also my personal favorite form, Limit Form. Access Limit Form alone with the help of friends far away. So in other words, you don't need anyone to use that particular form. I passed on the message as you so desired. I told the young Sora to keep defeating the Heartless. Good. 
Not only have you the power to inflict pain, you also have the power to plant seeds of doubt in one's receptive heart. Sora will soon begin to doubt himself. It will cause him to hesitate, and that hesitation will turn to anger. That anger will fuel him to get rid of his apprehension and move forward. He will pave the way for the future we desire. There's something I've meant to ask. About Axel, the poor fool. How long will he keep chasing the illusion of friendship? When he himself lacks emotion, trying so hard to retrieve what he has lost, when it may never have existed in the first place. He deserves nothing more than our pity. Hmm, I wonder what makes him say that. <laughs> All in due time, ladies and gentlemen. All in due time. The king, Riku. And now I've lost Kyrie again, too. Don't be sad. Bottle's right, you know. Why, you're the key that connects everything. So it's all my fault. Gorge, I didn't mean that. Just do what comes natural to you, and we're sure to find them. You're sad. Thanks, guys. Uh-oh. That's a... Sora, we better hurry and check it out right away. Indeed, we better get moving, because this looks quite ominous. Let's head into Hollow Bastion. Do you think? Looks like there's more heartless now. Whoa. Not just heartless, but nobody's too. Let's go check in with everyone. I think they're at Merlin's. Hello there, Hyper Kirby. Welcome to the stream. Glad you can make it. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, things are not looking so well when it comes to this world as of right now. Wow, even with high jump, I still can't reach that? Guess I need high jump level 2 in order to get that going. Anyway, with limit form, limit form is my favorite form because limit form specializes in limits. There are a ton of limits. Well, okay. There's technically like four limits, but still, you know what I mean, right? Uh, let's do, uh... Let's give Donald hyper healing. I think that ought to work. And Sora, hmm, I think I'm going to switch out all the wisdom for all the valor for the time being, just so that way I can start working on leveling that up a bit more. And as far as leveling up the limit form is concerned, in order to level up limit form, for each limit command finishing move unleashed, in limit form, one point of experience is gained. So in other words, spam limits like crazy. Cool. I'm glad that you enjoy my uh, YouTube channel, and I also appreciate you liking my name. Okay. Was there something else I needed to look at here? Um, doesn't look like it. Oh yeah, we have Oathkeeper now. Anyway, Oathkeeper, we get ourselves... Nice uh, boost in magic, but our strength does go down by one point. But hey, I'm okay with this, honestly. And for our sub weapon, I'm going to equip the Circle of Life. Because honestly, it's not a bad weapon to have equipped there. Also, Sora has another item slot which I can utilize, which I shall. Oh, hey, Cloud. What's up? Oh, 
Cloud! What you doing? I'll get him. This time, we settle it. Me and the one who embodies all the darkness in me. Sephiroth? Uh, I said you look kinda different, Cloud. If I do, it's his fault. Who's? Sephiroth. Tell me if you see him. Okay, what's he look like? Silver hair. Carries a long sword. Sure. Well, be seeing you, Cloud. Be careful. He messes with your head. Makes you think darkness is the only way. Is something wrong? Hey, Aerith. Uh, uh... It's nothing. I don't want you involved. You mean you don't want me there when you go away again? I just... Listen. Even if I go far away, I'll come back. Do you mean it? Yeah. See? You don't look so sure. Well... Okay, I understand. Go, get things settled. Huh? No matter how far away you are, once you find your light, I'm sure it will lead you back here again. Right? I suppose. So I'll stay here. And I'll cheer for you. Okay, Cloud? Okay. Wonder if he'll be okay. He'll be fine. My thoughts exactly. I'm sure there's some light in him somewhere. You're right. It's funny how uh, he says that when there's light in everyone. Ah! I was so close to re recreating that flavor too! What, lads? The young and his friends are in the brow. Or in the borough? Whatever. Hey, Merlin's house! Of course, I was just about to head there anyway. Figure I'd stop by, say hello, see what's up. Let's see, can we make anything new? It looks like a no, no, and not really. Okay. Well, it was worth a look anyway. You have anything for sale? No. Just the usual stuff. Honestly, I'm not too sure when their stock will update. Also, we have a new enemy here. Those guys can be kind of annoying, considering that uh, they are they specialize in spells and spell casting. But really, it, they're not the most annoying things to deal with. Trust me. There are far more annoying enemies that we'll be facing in just a short while. And besides, they aren't really all that difficult to take down anyway. Well, that was definitely something. <laughs> That's for sure. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go into Valor form here because I wasn't sure if I was going to trigger a cutscene or not. Thankfully, that isn't the case here. And honestly, it's a good thing. Considering that I still need to work on leveling up Valor form. And I think at this point now, I can technically level it up to level 4? I can't say if I can level it up to level 5, which is its max level. At least I'm pretty sure 5 is the max. No way through here. Oh, because obviously I screwed up and I went way past Merlin's house. Oops. Well, whatever. No big deal. 
Might as well use the increased movement speed from uh, Valorform to race over to Merlin's place. And if I'm lucky, I may be able to retain the form. Or not. Again, Oathkeeper is an excellent Keyblade to have, especially for, like, uh, grinding purposes. Other than that, though, it's still a good weapon to have. Hey, fellas, you're just in time. Got some good news for you. So, get yourselves over to Leon's. What kind of news? We found the computer Ansem was using. Oh, boy. Yep, should be able to get all kinds of info on the Heartless and the organization. And maybe something on the Dark Realm, too? It looks like that's where Riku and Kairi are. And the king. Go see for yourselves. It can't hurt. What do you mean? Nothing. Just get to the computer room through the castle postern. Watch your step. Sure thing, dude. Sure thing. Also, the reason why I'm jumping to the world map is not because I wanted to, uh change worlds or anything, but rather it's because, as I've mentioned before, if uh, you leave a world while on the drive form, your drive gauge is restored to its absolute maximum, so that's pretty nice. And again, like I've mentioned before, Leaving while well in a drive form is extremely helpful for uh, grinding drive form levels. By the way, um, I can't really remember for sure how many, uh, how much of the drive gauge is required for limit form, but I'm pretty sure it's like four. And it consumes four of the drive gauge. So it's definitely the most uh, high-costing form as of right now, as far as I know. Okay, let's get moving. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Maybe not Dark Road, but definitely the other one. Hello, who's there? Hi. What's Leon's gang up to? They've got stuff to do over by the castle poster. Scoop. Huh? Let's report. Yeah. Our leader, of course. Yeah, you know. Heh. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Riku. By the way, that's not the Riku we're looking for. Don't mind her. I assure you, we come in peace. You're kidding. Problem? Okay, fine. You do the talking. So sorry about this. Hmm. <laughs> 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 well, that, my friends, was Yuna, Riku, and Pain from Final Fantasy X-2. Instead of being turned into children like most Final Fantasy characters have been turned into in the Kingdom Hearts universe, instead they're turned into fairies. I don't understand the change. And honestly, it kind of baffles my mind how that's even the case. Regardless, though... Bump. Nice. It is kind of baffling how they were... Of all characters, why turn those three into fairies? It's kind of weird. But hey, at least it's not a combination of both of them being turned into a fairy as well as children. Just saying. Also, while we're heading over to the postern, we are going to be encountering some new Heartless types here. And just like many of the other Heartless, these guys can be kind of dangerous if you're unprepared. And they can also completely wreck your face in if you're not careful. These guys being a prime example. Oh, 
honestly, I think once you get these uh, bumper ball guys into the air, you'll be good. It's also pretty interesting how this whole area doesn't have a map yet, but I'm sure we'll be able to find the map for this particular location soon enough. Trust me, there's always a map in basically every location ever. Leon! <laughs> Over here! Just a second. I had something on my glasses. I had to get rid of that. What's up, Aerith? You guys found Anson's computer? Uh-huh. The king is very interested in it. The king? He's with Leon. We got... We get to see the king! Hooray! Uh, is Riku with them? Hmm. I wonder how she even knows who Riku is. Well, at least I can ask the king about him. And that computer might be able to tell us something. Good idea. Uh, excuse me. Good idea. Not sure why I had the burp there. They're right through there. Hmm. Quite a long passage. Anyway, welcome to the postern. And before we go any further, map time! Castle Perimeter Map, or Perimeter? I think that's how it's supposed to be said. Regardless, it's a map. What more is there to say? It's a very useful item, don't get me wrong. Maps are always useful. Okay. Thankfully, it seems like, for the most part, most of the items here are collectible right now. With the exception of, of course, that sticker right up there. That stinks. Uh, whatever. No big deal. We'll be grabbing it later anyway. For some reason, I was thinking I had another ability or two to equip, equip for Sora. But then I remembered, no, I don't. Hello. The heck was that? <laughs> that, folks, is Stitch. For some reason, he's here in Hollow Bastion. Why that is, is beyond me. Especially considering whenever one's world is gone, they usually end up in uh, Traverse Town. So why is it that, the, that Stitch is here? Probably because he left there and ended up in Hollow Bastion while searching for... A certain someone? Who knows? Regardless, though, it is kind of interesting to see that he's here. Also, say hello to some new enemies here as we completely tear them apart. Nice one, Goof. <laughs> Good old Goof. What a troop. Am I right? Ah! Okay. That was probably one of the worst jokes I ever came up with in my life. <laughs> uh, crank up that cringe dial. Anyway, most of the new enemies around here are basically pushovers. And really, you shouldn't worry too much about them whatsoever, unless they're big. In which case, you should worry about them. Dang it. Another sticker I can't get my hands on right now. That stinks. Okay, then. Aha! I knew there would be enemies around here. By the way, I'm pretty sure most enemies around here, their uh, limits can... Not limits, but 
their uh, reaction commands can be used against not only themselves, but against an entire enemy horde. And let me tell you, that's actually pretty damn awesome. Anything else around here? Doesn't look like it. Oh my, my stomach is really growling right now. And this place is quite a mess. Handsome. Gorge. I guess this must be his room. Master King. Hello? Hey, you. Hey, Tifa. I'm looking for somebody. Have any of you seen a guy with spiky hair? You mean me? <laughs> Spikier. It depends. I'll just take a look around. Nice one, Tifa. Kick a wall for no reason. Sorry to bother you. It's fine. No but... bother, man. Again, why kick a wall for no reason? Did you have a Ultra Instinct or something going off? So you made it. Leon! Where the hell did you come from? He just appeared from thin air. Let's go speak with Leon. And we also get a skill recipe. Nice. Isn't the king with you? Shh. You'll see him soon enough. Hey! Here, this ought to tide you over. Ooh, secret door. Love it. Anson's computer room. Or what else we can find in here? Doesn't look like much of anything at this moment in time. The computer room's through here. Computers are delicate. It's okay to touch them, but don't goof around. If Sora even knows how to use a computer, that is. This is it. Where's Kyrie? Where's Riku? That is not how you use a computer, Sora. You want to break it? Oh, sorry. Guess I got a little carried away. Whoa! Uh -huh. Hi there! Whoa! Ha! Ha ha ha! Attention, current user. This is a warning. Further misuse of this terminal will result in immediate defensive action. Who's there? I am the master control program. I oversee this system. Where are you? Nice one, Donald. I'm sorry. Decision gate breached. You are now under arrest. Arrest? For what? Misusing the terminal? Uh oh. Run! Nice convincing voice acting there, Leon. <laughs> hmm. Well, anyway, folks, welcome to a brand new world, Space Paranoids! Space Paranoids is technically the world of Tron, the original Tron, not Tron Legacy. That's not till Dream Drop Distance. Uh oh. Why did you guys surrender? Exactly. Hi, who are you? Who are you? I am Commander Sark. 
A heartless commander? Hmm. Observe. Okay, you're the boss. I get it. Is this anyway? Good question. You're inside a mainframe computer system. A what system? A computer system for processing data. This system is a copy of one created by a corporation called ENCOM. The original program was destroyed. But this copy was acquired by another user. The new user updated and customized the programs, renaming the system Hollow Bastion OS. He used the system for town maintenance and to advance his private research. My name is Tron. I'm a security program. But now I'm under arrest. Same as you. Did you guys get any of that? Cool. I sure did. You know, maybe we should just introduce ourselves. I'm Sora. And I'm Tron. Nice to meet you, Tron. Well, I'm Goofy. With that configuration, you must be users. Users? That would make perfect sense. You'd better get out of here quickly. Who knows what the MCP will do to you? MCP? The Master Control Program. It controls the whole system. If you idle here, you will be derezzed. So, how do we get out of here? This terminal could have gotten you back to the user world. But the MCP cut the power 50 microcycles ago. <sighs> if we could bring the energy core in the canyon online, we could power it back up. The problem is, we're stuck in this cell. We're not going anywhere unless we unlock the energy fields. Hmm, that should be easy enough. Anyway, before we uh, start attacking that particular door, first off, hello, my name, Big Brad. Welcome to the stream. Sorry I didn't greet you earlier. We were kind of in the middle of a cutscene, and I kind of wanted to be quiet when it came to that. And besides, uh, I haven't really given my thoughts on this world in general yet. And honestly, I can't really say I dislike the world, but it is definitely one of the more unique worlds in the game. And I'm also glad that the, to see that my name, Big Bread, also is a big fan of this world. As far as the movie Tron itself is concerned, um, I have not seen the movie. I have not seen Tron, so I have no opinion on the movie whatsoever. From what I hear, it's a... Uh, I think it's pretty mixed as far as opinions are concerned. Again, I wonder if that movie is on Disney+. Plus. I can't say whether or not it is because, well, <laughs> I don't have a subscription to it, but my sister does. So I can't really confirm or deny if it is on Disney+, Plus or not. Hmm. Again, regardless, judging this world by itself, um, no, I have not seen Tron Legacy. But anyway, as I was saying... Judging this world by itself, like I was saying before, it is definitely one of the more unique worlds of the game. Probably second to that of the Pride Lands. Honestly, it's definitely one of my more favorites. And done. Doors unlocked. That was easy. You'll literally just whack it until you win. Master Control, why not just derez Tron? I still haven't located the password to the data space. What about a logic probe? With all your processing power? Out of the question. 
The current environment hampers the processing power needed for such an analysis. You're dismissed, Sark. Stop any remaining anomalies in the system, or else... End of line. Acknowledged. Remarkable! It seems you have some unique functions. I'll go with you to the canyon. You'll need someone who can interface with the energy core, right? If you say so. Thanks, Tron. Anyway, Tron has joined the party for the time being, and he too has his own abilities, which it doesn't look like much here. There's only jackpot, item boost, and auto change. Um, just like with Mulan, I'm pretty sure he'll get his full set of abilities at a later point in time. But as of right now, that's all he got. This is all he's got. Overall, not very spectacular, but he is definitely a fun party member to have around. Especially with his, his limit, that's for sure. Alright, time to get moving. Hmm. One thing I'm going to go ahead and mention now is that I may have to end today's stream around midway through this world's completion because we are getting close to the three hour mark. We are two hours and 47 minutes into today's session. And I got I will say this, this world is pretty long. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a fun world. Don't get me wrong. Let's access this computer. Hmm. Looks like one of the energy cores is missing. This is the energy core. Hmm. Find the real parts. What's this all about? Yes. Okay, so we have a bit of a mini game here. Okay. So I believe for this minigame, you want to uh, grab as many of these clusters as you can, and also try to find the yes. one core that was lit up. If you miss it, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Okay. Keep an eye on it. There we go. That took a bit of a time. Took a bit of time, but hey, at least the deed was done. Hmm. That is a discussion for another time, at least for now. Glad that's taken care of. Mission accomplished? Yes. Now, will you do something for me? You got it. Don't you want to hear what it is first? You helped us, now it's our turn. You guys really are users. Your actions are totally illogical. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Let's hurry back to the pit cell. Where's that again? That's the sector where we met. Roger. Roger Dodger. <laughs> anyway, to answer your question, Hyper Kirby, um, what got me into doing Let's Plays, it was a really long time ago. I was actually inspired by several other YouTubers 
to get into the whole Let's Playing scene. It, and I've been doing Let's Plays for at least the past decade now. It's been, I think, about 12 years. 12 years since I've been doing Let's Plays. I started in uh, about 2008, and I'm still going strong to this very day. My Let's Plays have evolved over the years, and now I'm presenting them as live streams. Okay, let's access this computer. What do we got here? Ooh, teleportation system. Pretty sweet. Let's go. So, what did you want us to do? Find my user. He'll give you the password to access the DTD. You bet! So, um... DTD is the name my user gave to the data space. Copies of all the original system programs are stored there, along with anything that's sensitive or restricted. Is there stuff about the Heartless or Organization 13? Hmm, most likely. A number of my functions were appropriated when I last took on the MCP. That's why I need the password. If I can get inside the DTD, I can access my original backup program and restore all my functions. Then I'll be able to put this system back the way it was before the MCP got control and changed everything. The way it was supposed to be. A free system for you, the users. Hmm. Gee, Tron, ain't the MCP one of those programs too? Do you know who it was who made it? Actually, I don't know. Okay, we'll just have to find your user and ask him. What's his name? You mean you don't know? <laughs> My user is the user of this system. Anson the Wise. I am so. Whoa, what a twist! Uh oh. That's not good. Looks like the MCP's onto us. I'll keep this terminal up and running. You better exit the system now. Sure, but Tron, Ansem is... Okay, you're good to go. Hurry. Will do. Also, Donald, you really shouldn't make promises that you can't keep. Just saying. Kind of strange how this cutscene plays at 60 FPS. Kind of like a couple of others, too. Well, what do you know? We're back in the real world. We did it! Where have you been? Uh, you don't know? Well, uh... There's a world inside this computer where these um, programs live, and... Yeah, it's kind of difficult to explain. So, in other words, Ansem's research data is off-limits unless we know the password. I think that's right. But you already defeated Ansem. Gorsh, maybe we'll never find the password. That means... This, this is all a wild goose chase. Perhaps Ansem wrote down the password somewhere. You're chasing what now? Hey, what's up, Tifa? Well, well, a hidden room. Guess I'd better take another look around. Okay, well, don't go kicking anything. I'm like a wild banshee, you know? She just won't give up. And neither will we. Come on, we gotta look for that password. Right, we made a promise to Tron. Excuse me? Whoa, what do we have here? Uh. Tifa, why'd you go punching that? That could hold very valuable information. This looks kind of interesting. What's this doodle? Hello. Well, 
Looks like a diagram or something. <laughs> Thanks for that, uh, Hyper Kirby. D T D D T D. What's up? Look at this. This must be the data space. The D T D. See? The door to darkness. What do you know? But that still leaves the password. Say, fellas, did somebody mention the door to darkness? Hey, Mickey. Exactly. You mentioned the door to darkness? Oh, uh, yes, sir. You see, we're looking for the secret password. Password? Oh, I guess you mean like a code. That's exactly what it is, Mickey. Well, the door to darkness can only be opened by the seven princesses. There's Snow White, Jasmine, and Belle. Of course. What are you trying to do? With that password, we can get access to Ansem's research data. So that means you might be able to find out where he is. Uh, stop joking around, Your Majesty. We already defeated Ansem. You know that. Well, looks like I've got a lot of explaining to do. Yes, you do. Okay, but first I've got a question. Hey. Isn't Tron waiting for you guys? Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. If those Heartless attack, I'll stand and fight with everybody here. Yeah, we will too. Then let's talk more later. That's a promise. I'll see you when you get back. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Oh, one more thing. Let me give you your clothes some new power, Sora. Really? You bet. You've done so much, just consider it a thank you present. Thanks, Your Majesty. We're heading off to see Tron now, so wait here for us, okay? I will, Sora. And remember, be careful. Of course, we will. And with that, Mickey gives us a, our next form, Master Form. With the help of two friends, use the Drive command to change into Master Form. Master form is quite an interesting and fun form. One of the more powerful forms you will get your hands on in the entire game. It's another uh, Keyblade form that allows you to dual wield Keyblades, which is pretty damn sweet. And leveling up is probably one of the more complicated forms to level up. So with master form, in order to level it up, you have to get your hands on drive orbs. A small orb will give you one point of experience, and a big drive orb will give you three points of experience. And trust me, we're going to need a hell of a lot in order to level up uh, Master Form. But trust me, leveling up Master Form is well worth the time. And eventually we will find a way to be able to fully uh, upgrade that form to its maximum potential. Trust me. Just saying. Uh, let's use Follow the Wind here, because I got nothing else to equip right now. And yeah, we are getting close to three hours. I wonder if there's another save point in here I can use before I can uh, head back into Tron's world. Probably not. We'll find out soon enough. Anywho, we get ourselves a ukulele charm. With the help of two friends, use the summon command to call for Stitch for a helping hand. Aha! See what I told, tell you, folks. Stitch is a summoning that you can use in this game. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and call in the session here, folks. It is getting kind of late, 
and finishing up Space Paranoids in the next session may be the best idea. That way we can get a lot more done within a good time frame. So with that folks, I bid you all do for today. This is General Snivy with the Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix playthrough. Thank you all so much for watching and if you were able to attend the live stream live, thank you for attending. Next time we're heading into, we're heading back into Space Paranoids, finishing up Tron's World, possibly, and maybe even embark on uh, some additional uh, uh, trips to all the different worlds that we visited up to this point. Only one way to find out, and that is to tune in next time. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. See you all on the flip side.